Hi folks, Paul here, and I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a new video. This one is going to be about the uh, primitive pack that I have on my back. You might have just got a quick glimpse of it there as I was walking away into the distance. Um, it's a project I've been working on for a while, and it's sort of the pinnacle of pretty much everything in the world of bushcraft that I've been doing for the past seven or eight years anyway. So it's going to be featuring heavily in the next couple of videos. I'm going to be doing some overnighters. I'm going to be doing some uh, long distance walks, that kind of thing. And so I figured before we get into doing any of that, what I would do is just give you guys a quick look at everything that's in there. We'll go through all the equipment, all the tools, all the materials. I'll explain a bit about why I think I need them or why they're important. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's of, uh, of some use. So with all that being said, let's uh, go and find ourselves a nice spot. I think we'll set up a bit of a fire just to uh, keep the rain at bay. And uh, we'll have a look at the bag itself, the actual pack, and then we'll look at its contents. So. I appreciate you uh, clicking on this video. I hope you stick along for the ride and uh, let's go. Okay folks, so fire's lit, uh, I've got my pack on and I figured I would give you guys a quick rundown on the pack itself. I'll try and intersperse all this talking with footage of the actual uh, actual thing up close. I, uh, I don't know how well you guys can see from there, um, but I'll try and snip in footage. Uh, but the pack is made of goat skin. Now this isn't a goat I killed myself or even tanned myself. This is just from online. Uh, and everything here you see that isn't made by me or is made with some sort of modern tools, um, I'm going to aim to replace at some point. So just bear that in mind as I'm talking through this. There are things in here that will change. There's things in here that uh, maybe aren't quite as authentic as I'd want them to be just yet, but they're, uh, they're all on the list of things to do. So the, the pack itself is made of goat skin. Um, Two goat skins actually, and it's sort of uh, stitched, almost like a box or a rectangle. Um, it's quite sort of uh, straight edged almost. And uh, I had that sort of design in mind for a while because I wanted to, to make a pack frame. Now I've never made a pack frame before, but I was quite drawn to the idea because um, Utsi the Iceman, who some of you might be aware of, uh, a mummy they found in the Italian Alps had a, a pack with him and I believe, I could be wrong, that it was a pack frame and so him being a bit of an inspiration of mine I thought well it'd be nice to try and replicate that. So the pack itself is goat skin, again, uh, the stitching is all done with like a leather um, thonging. This button here is one of my fired clay pendants and then the frame itself you can see here it's got these uh, chamois leather or um, yeah chamois leather they call it uh, straps again stitched with leather thonging and then the frame itself here you can see it's it's a bent frame and the frame is a willow I use willow because it's wet uh, I didn't have to steam it or anything like that it was literally just a case of go out find the right branch and then bend it round I took a little while to find one that would actually hold up to that kind of level of extreme bending but willow, with its moisture content, is really, really good for that. Um, and then for the, the back braces here, I thought I would just go something a little bit different, and I chose to use birch. Now again, none of this is really finished to like a high standard as such. Um, it's all very sort of uh, rough and ready. And it's designed to be that way, because I find if I make something that's, that's too pretty, I sort of shy away from wanting to use it. And that's not what I'm about. For me, everything I make has to be used, it's got to be functional. And I want it to have purpose. So it's got two uh, two back braces here, one that sits kind of just below my uh, my lower back, and then one that's kind of up in the middle here. And I find that works really well in offering support. Because I'm putting all sorts of weird things in this bag, I decided a frame would be good to stop me from getting stabbed in the back by random bits of flint or bone or knives or uh, antler, whatever it might be, just to offer me some protection. And I also like the fact that when you put it on, regardless of the weight, 
you know what it's going to feel like, if that makes sense. You know where it's going to sit, you know how it's going to feel, that kind of thing. Um, and then on the side here you'll see I have a quiver, or a quiver, and um, it is spruce bark. I made this a long, long time ago now actually. And when I was making the pack I, I kind of had a vision of being able to store arrows and hand drill spindles and uh, even my, my flutes in here as well. Um, just those bigger, longer things that wouldn't quite fit in the pack. And so I had this lying around and I thought I would try and implement it in and so it's attached with two uh, goat straps kind of along the, uh, along the edge there. Um, but the pack itself is really uh, really quite simple, there's nothing too, too special about it. On this side there is a little uh, uh, chamois leather pocket here. Now I use chamois leather a lot in a lot of the things I make because it's the closest thing I can get my hands on to buckskin. Uh, unfortunately I just don't have the time to make buckskin. Um, but it's essentially the same material just from a different animal. So on this side I have a, a chamois pocket here and then sticking out of it, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I have my, uh, my primitive knife. And uh, as I'm walking along if I find something or a plant or something I want to, uh, to cut and take with me, it means that the, the knife is right there and I can just access it cut whatever it is I need and then put it back in the pocket. So quite important to have that um, somewhere within easy reach I thought. So that's pretty much it for the pack itself. There's nothing really too much to it and I kind of, uh, I like that about it. You know if it's simple it means there's less parts that are going to break, it's, uh, it's easier to repair and bear in mind I'm doing all of this with the intention of having to be able to fix it from materials I can obtain myself, hunt myself, produce myself from nature. Uh, my, my inspiration here is purely to try and uh, go along the tracks of primitive man, so you know, uh, there's no duct tape where we're going. So that's pretty much it for the pack itself. Uh, we'll quickly go over the contents of the quiver, seeing as it's right here. Um, these are just modern arrows. And uh, again, these will be getting replaced at some point. I do make my own primitive arrows, so that's not a problem. Um, those are just a sort of quick fix for just now. Uh, the reason I have arrows is because I do carry a bow. Oh, I'm run off and get it. So again, the bow is another one of those modern things I'm looking to replace. Uh, it's just a little uh, Mongolian horse bow, 50 pound draw weight. And, uh, about 28, 28 inch draw length for me on there and uh, really really good, nice and small for moving through the woods that kind of thing um, and that usually is on the pack as well but just because I was walking in carrying cameras and buckets and things I decided just to kind of have that sitting off at the side. Uh, and then lastly in here I have my, uh, my flute, this was gifted to me by uh, Dwayne uh, last year at Lavu on the farm, it's an absolutely beautiful Native American flute and um, again just because the length of it, it sort of fits perfectly in here so I, uh, I keep it in there. I'll give you a little ditty. So it's nice to have that there just to kind of um, act as a bit of evening entertainment, it's nice just to kind of unwind, because again, thinking back to the fact that this is all primitive, my entertainment systems in here, my, my like ways of having fun are stashed in here, it's not just about like what I need to go out and sleep in the woods for a night, it's about like my entire life, so the things I want to enjoy, the things I want to share, the things I want to experience, I've got to try and fit it all in here. And so the flute is very much part of that, that's part of like the recreational side of this, uh, this pack that I'm putting together. And there's a couple of other things like that in here too. But we'll open the pack. So to open it, it's just got like four holes and the chamois leather acts as a sort of a, a draw cord there. Goes around the, the button, very simple closure system, nothing fancy. Inside it is just an absolute kind of... Uh, Aladdin's cave of primitive goodies. So before I start unpacking this I'm going to just get a quick shot of the, the inside here for you just to give you an idea of what it looks like.
Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll start unpacking now. I'll bring you guys in closer so you can actually see what it is I'm bringing out here. Okay, so uh, we'll start um, unpacking this and as you can see it's uh, it's fairly full in there. I've got all kinds of things in there. But at the top I decided I would try and keep, like much like you would do when you're packing your, your kit normally, you want to keep all the things that are going to be uh, kind of needed or in highest demand at the top of you like. So for me um, that starts off primarily with the uh, fire kit I've got here. This is a fire kit um, I've put together and it contains Amadou, uh, there's a piece of pyrite in there and there's a piece of flint. The pouch itself is uh, made by Ed Chambers. You'll have seen him in the last video. If not, then I recommend you check that out. And uh, I used it in one of his videos recently, so I'll, uh, I'll add a link to that too. Secondly, I have my flint napping kit. Now apologies, this is all wrapped up and you're not really going to see too much just now, but I will kind of splay all this out and uh, then tell you about it. So, flint napping kit. And again, you'll notice everything's wrapped in this chamois leather. I was going to make like nice pouches and um, kind of go to the, the effort of making it all look very nice and prim and proper. But actually for me, this is just as aesthetically pleasing, but functionally it's also just as good. Um, because kind of I can put anything in it and just wrap it up. It's, there's no, uh, I'm not tied into having a pouch of a certain shape or a certain size. Um, literally I put whatever I need in this and then roll the chamois up with the tools in it and then just tie a couple of uh, bits of cord around it. And the other thing is I'm not, you know, I'm not like sentimental about getting it dirty or anything. In fact, I actually quite like getting it dirty because it gives it like patina, you know, it makes it look old. So flint napping kits in there. Seeing as we're talking about flint napping kit, we have a little bag of flint here. You can hear the noises there. And then lastly on the top here, we have just a bag of, uh, or a pouch of things for, for making stuff with. So I'll quickly kind of explain why it is I've got these things at the top and uh, their sort of importance in the primitive world, why these things are so substantial. Uh, the fire kit of course speaks for itself. Fire um, in prehistory would have been used for, for warmth, for cooking, for fending off um, predators, for, for staving away sort of uh, animals and things like that. Um, as well as processing materials and uh, overall, you know, as we know now, even in the modern day when you go out to the woods, it's fundamental having access to uh, to fire nice and quick is, uh, is very important. Um, next we have the, uh, the flint napping kit and of course primitive man's knives were flint. Um, I of course have my, my kind of my nice fancy um, flint knife here and it's good for woodwork it's sort of serrated um, it's not necessarily sharp um, but it's serrated so it's good for cutting things like wood and bone um, an antler, uh, but it's not as good for like cutting meat and stuff like that. Whereas in here, and I'll bring these out later and show you, I have basically a bag of flakes that are super sharp. And so if I wanted to, if I found an animal and I want to skin it, I would pull a flake out of this and use this before I would use my big knife. Um, and they're at the top just for that very reason, just because in the same way that you have a knife in your pocket when you're out in the woods or on your belt, this is. Um, basically the same thing. It's in there, if I see something I want to very quickly process and cut, I just pull this out, grab a knife, and then um, away I go. And it's a similar situation with this as well, so anything I, I choose to make whilst I'm out, um, it's good to be able to kind of access those materials readily, because that's what you do most of the time when you're out in the woods, when you're into your primitive skills, you spend most of your time just making things. Like that's the fundamental key to, to being successful um, outdoors from a primitive point of view. So having all of your making stuff essentially at the top is, is the key there. In here I've got things like sinew, I believe there's pine resin in here, um, there's like bits of bones and things, um, all sorts of stuff in there. And then we kind of get down into the, the stuff that is more like, okay I found a camp, I'm going to set up, I'm going to make myself comfortable. 
and one of the first things that comes out then is a skin. This is another goat skin. And uh, of course there's many uses, like I could turn this into clothing, I could turn it into pouches, um, I can use it to keep warm as a blanket, I can use it as a sit mat for when I'm out in the woods, just to sit on and be comfortable. Um, so just a regular old goat skin, no, uh, no fancy like, you know, no fancy gimmicks or anything. But just like that for example, a skin that you can turn into so many different things. Um, you know, water vessels, uh, clothes, containers, uh, all sorts. Um, it's just kind of goes to it, highlight just how versatile a primitive kit has to be. Uh, whereas, whereas I think like our modern equipment, it's very much like goal focused. It's like you've got stuff that kind of just does one thing, you know? Like uh, like your hammock is just your hammock, your tarp is just your shelter. It's like you kind of you can use those things for other things, but they're not designed that way. Um, they're designed for one job. Whereas like being able to kind of utilize whatever materials I have in so many different ways is what allows me the ability to kind of be comfortable outside. Anyway, <clears throat> apologies if I if I ramble on. It's uh, <laughs> again touching on the skins. So I've got like a big chamois skin here. So if I broke a strap of my bag, I'm not going to have duct tape to fix it. It's not nylon, it's not going to last forever. It's, uh, you know, it's a natural material, it will degrade at some point. So I have another chamois skin here, big enough to cut straps from. It's big enough to make pouches from again. It's big enough to, uh, to make cordage from. Just again, another a huge, huge collection of things you can do with this. And then inside here, it's a flint scraper, randomly. And then I use this one for keeping all of my skins in. So again, like going back to uh, to having the materials on hand, you know, if I come across a, an animal and I'm going to use its skin for something, then I need to keep those skins and they're really important, you know, for, for making things with. So I've got a load of... Uh, a lot of squirrel skins in there. There's rabbit skins somewhere, I believe. And the other thing I have, weirdly, is mole skins. So me and my old man trap moles sometimes. So I have like a, a collection of mole skins. And again, it's just like having the things to be able to have a nice time uh, out in the woods. You know, stepping away from that instant gratification of just setting up your tarp in your hammock and then sitting by the fire for the rest of the day. Like, when I come out to the woods, I want to sit and make something. And so, all this stuff allows me the ability to make these things, but they're also tools that allow me to be comfortable whilst I'm out. And that's true of, like, this entire bag, so I'll stop saying it now. <laughs> I'm sorry for, uh, for repeating myself. It's just kind of to highlight the importance of these things. Uh, my little Amadou um, pouch that I made, this is made from mushrooms. I'll be doing a video on this soon enough again, I'm sure. Um, but an Amadou pouch, just for keeping uh, viable things in. That's a very sentimental pouch, so I keep all my important stuff in there. Mushrooms for transporting fire, so I've got birch polypore there. And I've got a little pouch here of Daldinia concentrica, King Alfred's cakes. What else we got? Oh, there's the, the pine resin. So I have a... Just a little clay pot that I made, and I use uh, my pine pitch glue in there for when I'm hafting blades or fixing holes in containers or any of those sorts of things. Um, I've always been a fan of having it in a, in a pot like this as opposed to on sticks, just because it allows you the, the luxury of kind of sitting on the fire and being able to dip in and out. Whereas with a stick, you kind of have to like get your stick hot and then you've got bits dripping off. Whereas this, it's like you can. It stays warm as well for much longer, so you can kind of dip in and out as you need it. So, uh, primitive glue there. Uh, as an example of primitive glue, you can see I use it to like haft my uh, my knife blade in here, for instance, just to kind of uh, an example of the thing it's used for. Let's see what else have we got? More uh, more recreational stuff. So this is a flute that I made. Uh, inside a um, 
a spruce bark and chamois leather sheath with some buzzard feathers on it. It's bark on the uh, on the back side there. Apologies if the camera's not focusing here, hopefully it does. And then inside I've got the first ever flute that I made that actually works. And it's made from um, the bone of a, the wing bone of a swan. A mute swan, ironically. <laughs> and uh, it's the only, like I say, the only flute I've managed to make that works. I've tried to make loads and uh, I tell you, they're one of those like things that you think would be quite easy, but actually is surprisingly difficult. <laughs> it's uh, it's by no means as nice as that flute that Dwayne gave me, but it's uh, I made it myself. It's like authentically primitive. You can see there's more pine pitch glue in the in the ends there as well. So very sentimental that I really uh, I really enjoy this thing. I need to, to work on my uh, my ability to play it, but it's uh, it's nice. I like it. Uh, we'll explore some some fired clay stuff now, shall we? So this again, one of my most sentimental possessions. I don't think I need to tell you what it is or what it's good for. Uh, just a simple bowl made from my local river clay, fired by myself, comes straight out of the ground. I've had this for years now. I eat out of it, I drink out of it. It's just like my go-to uh, bowl for doing anything. Beautiful colors in there. Uh, it's got like a sort of stippled effect on the outside. Very, very proud of that. And it's, uh, it's lasted me a few years now. And then sticking with the, the fired clay theme, we have this here. Um, this is for transporting fire. So for instance, if I want to transport my fire to a new location, funnily enough, I have a fire next to me so I can actually show you this, then I can take embers and just chuck them in there. Don't know if you'll see it, but now I've got an ember and I can just carry that along safely without you know risk to myself or or the environment you know I don't want to be dropping embers and setting stuff on fire or anything like that so that's what that's for this is just like um, this is like a comfort blanket essentially um, again had this for maybe five years now maybe a bit longer and it's all wool that I collected and spun myself and then wove together on a frame I don't really use it for anything, I, like, I sit my bowl on it sometimes but I, I made it at my uh, my home island in Uist in the Outer Hebrides and so really it's just like a reminder of home, you know? It doesn't look particularly nice or anything but I'm super, like, I love it and I wouldn't be, I'd be lost without it um, but it's just like, I don't know, it's comfort, you know? Uh, I don't think we really carry that in like a modern capacity either, which is unfortunate um, but yeah, so I use it for like sitting stuff on or working on that kind of thing. What else do we have? Some wooden tools. We'll we'll explore the world of wood for a minute here. This is um, a spork that my friend, my good friend Chris Landrigan made for me, and uh, I use that again coupled with my bowl for eating, processing materials, whatever. <coughs> I mean, I don't need to explain to you guys how to use a spork, I'm sure. And then lastly, you know, as much as I'm a caveman at heart, it's important to, uh, to be looking good. And uh, to do that, I use this wooden comb. Uh, I can't remember what it's made out of, actually. I think it's like hazel or something. Had it for a long time. Absolute nightmare to carve. Um, but something, again, I'm really kind of, uh, really pleased with. You can see what I mean, like, this is just Aladdin's cave, it just kind of keeps on going. Just a little antler container there from a friend, Daniel. Uh, I use that for keeping, um, like, tinder in, um, so I always have the ability to make a fire. A little bark container. It's got something in it. Oh yeah, okay. So a bark container. 
I made this when I was down uh, at a course with a friend of mine, Jeff Preen. Inside there is another clay container here. This is a very important clay container though, because inside it, there is a collection of focus camera, focus. A collection of arrowheads. Um, so when I do finally get round to making um, making my actual real arrows, then I have the arrowheads here to do it. And because arrowheads, you know, they take a little while to make, they're very precious, they're important, they need to be sharp and looked after. I, uh, I keep them in one of my uh, my little clay containers just so I know where they are, so they're safe. And uh, that's what stays in there. So again, you can kind of see that it's, it's about really having all the all the things you need to make the things that you need. It's not just like, oh cool, yeah, no, I'll just carry out 600 arrows. It's like, okay, well, I'll carry out the ability to make the arrows from nature, and then I'll make the arrows and I'll carry the arrows. I'll shoot them, I'll lose them, I might, you know, destroy them, but then I have the means to make more. In here, a redundant fire kit, just in case, exactly the same as my other one. Um, pyrite, flint, and uh, I think there's chaga on the bottom of that one too. Um, it's that kind of old saying, two is one and one is none, especially when it comes to fire, you kind of want to be able to make sure you've got that in the bag, so um, two fire kits. We're getting to the bottom now, I think. So here I have like a little clay spoon, this is my eating spoon, and uh, again, had that a while now. Couple that with my bowl, and I've got a nice... Uh, A nice like eating setup. No. This is unusual and I'm not sure if I'll keep it or not. I might change it for something else at some point because it's not really authentic to this part of the world. Um, but this it's very it's very sort of a exciting is an ostrich egg. Now again wrapped in chamois leather not because it needs protecting from anything because this wouldn't offer much protection but because by wrapping it in chamois leather I then have a piece of chamois leather to make more things with. So I made this a while ago I didn't well I didn't make it I'd have a, a very sore re-rend if I did. <laughs> um, what I mean is, I did all the sort of doodles on it and stuff a while ago, back when I was kind of just just starting out and I look at it now and it's a little bit gimmicky and stuff so I'll get rid of all the, the symbols on it and I'll maybe make like a a twisted um, a twisted bark like holder for it um, but I was going to use this, I need to make a stopper for it as well but I was going to use this for transporting water because that's one of the things that's actually really really difficult in the primitive world transporting water is a huge huge deal so um, this just fe felt like a good natural option for, for that, so, uh, and it's, the thing is like porcelain, um, it's unreal. So seeing as we've talked about water, I may as well bring this bad boy out. If you watched Ed videos, or Ed, Ed videos, Ed Chambers video last week, um, on his channel, you will have seen this actually being made, or fired, if I can get it out. This is my biggest clay pot. Uh, this will be getting used for cooking in, for boiling water in, for uh, sort of processing materials in. Uh, it's completely fired, it will uh, hold water nicely. It does, the, the clay itself absorbs moisture, um, so it will soak up the water but the clay doesn't sort of break down because it's been fired properly. Um, so that sits at the very, very bottom of the pack. And like, I'm only going to be bringing this out when I'm at camp and I'm going to be like cooking or something, you know? So it's quite heavy, but it's definitely worth having. Again, kind of goes to that carrying water, being able to utilize water. Um, because water is one of those, it's slippery. <laughs> Funnily enough is a good way of putting it. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, hard thing to deal with in the primitive world. Uh, 
in the sense that carrying it, boiling it, using it, they're all much, much more difficult to achieve using primitive tools than they are modern. You know, like stainless steel water bottles, we, you know, they're a dime a dozen, we take them for granted, you can cook in them, you can boil water in them, everything, transport water, uh, and we just take that for granted. Whereas like these days, or these days, back in primitive days, the ability to transport water, to boil water even, was a huge undertaking because you had to use natural materials, you know? And there isn't many natural materials that kind of allow that very readily, especially ones you can just carry. So uh, that's a very, very important part of the, the kit, that one. And then at the very, very bottom of the bag, I think, oh no, there's one more thing. A secondary uh, flint knife, or this one's day sight actually. Now I should say both of these knives weren't napped by me, they were napped by a guy called Adrian Fouch, I think his name is. Uh, Lithic Prehistory on Instagram. I did the handles, he did the blades. Um, kind of goes back to that like bartering trading system that might have been going on uh, back in back in the primitive world if you like. But it's good just to have, again, a second knife just in case you happen to lose your first one. But if you did lose your first one, you would just find flint and make another one. Uh, which is the joy of these all these natural materials. So that's it, that's the bag empty. It's like Aladdin's cave, you can see what I mean, there's like uh, tons and tons of space in there. The thing when it's filled weighs maybe, well, I don't know, I'd say 10 kilos maybe, thereabouts for the clay, like all the clay stuff's really heavy. I'm literally carrying rocks, uh, so that it can be quite heavy sometimes. But uh, like it's comfortable enough. So then, seeing as we're exploring the world of a primitive living, you might have noticed there's one thing I've not mentioned, and that is my, uh, my sleep system. And that is what this is. So this is a double sheepskin. And this is literally what I use to, to sleep when I'm out in the woods, uh, doing like the authentic primitive uh, version, if you like. What I might do is find like a, a natural shelter or I might quickly make one. And then it's literally just a case of lie on this, pull your other skins over you and go to sleep. The only reason I can get away with this is because I can make fire. Um, if I didn't have fire, this would be a really, really dangerous thing to do. Uh, literally just sleeping out in the woods in the open with very little kind of blankets or warmth as such. Um, the, the key to my sleep system is fire, which is why I've got two means of making it. Um, as well as the ability to just go into the woods and make it anyway using hand drill or bow drill. Um, that is literally just how I keep warm. Just I'll sit this next to a fire, it's wool, it won't burn or anything like that, and so I can sleep on it, curl up next to the fire, have a pile of logs and sticks and just keep feeding it on and uh, hopefully make it through the night. So that's the sleep system essentially. Now there is things missing from the, uh, the bag here, I should say. And um, it's nothing exciting actually, to be fair. The things I'm talking about mainly would be like bundles of sticks. So we call them faggots in Scotland. I don't know what they're called elsewhere. I'm sure they have like different folklore kind of names. Um, but a faggot is essentially like a really, really tight bundle of very, very small sticks. And you kind of bind them up and you just keep them there ready for, should you ever need to kind of make a fire very quickly. And they're great because you can, uh, you can take like a tiny ember from the fire and actually get the the faggot to go into flame by putting the ember inside it, much like you'd blow grass to flame. Um, I would definitely be carrying a couple of those in here too, I just haven't got around to making them. And what else is there? The other thing I'm in the middle of making is a fishing kit. Um, so obviously in Scotland we don't really actually have the ability to go out and hunt with a bow. Um, all we can really do is fish. I'm going to actually bring the camera up a bit so you can see me. All we actually have is like the ability to fish. Um, even then, using primitive stuff, it would be illegal, but uh, it's less sketchy than shooting arrows across a forest. <laughs> it's more, uh, it's more discreet, should we say? And so I'm in the middle of making a, a primitive fishing kit, and that too will also get chucked into the uh, into the, the bag that I've made here. Um, but that's essentially it. Um, as I've been saying. Apologies, this video, I can see it's what, 24 minutes now? 
Apologies, this has just been like a very long, rambly kind of uh, video. But I kind of wanted to show you all these different things and why they're important. Uh, what I'll do is I'll set out my um, my uh, big my big skin here, and I'll actually open up all the different packages for you, and then just give you a run past with the camera and kind of do a little bit of explaining on which one or on uh, on what it's all for, why it's important, blah blah blah, blah. Um, because you know when you look at this, it doesn't really tell you much. So I'll uh, I'll open it up and give you guys a proper look. So I'll go and do that just now, and then I shall bring you guys back. Okay, so that is pretty much um, it for kind of all the stuff we pulled out and looked at very quickly. Um, as you can see, I've kind of got the stuff laid out now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just quickly kind of go over all the bundles. So like we were saying, a lot of the stuff I have there is actually wrapped up in skins. Uh, just because the skins become useful themselves later on. Uh, but that means that you guys never really got to see what was inside them. So what I'll do is I'll bring the camera in and we'll quickly kind of have a look at all the different... Uh, all the different things that were, were hidden away. I'll do a bit of a quick kind of show and tell. It's worth saying that everything you see here um, is about, I don't know, nine years worth of practice and uh, learning. And then like the actual making of all the stuff that's here as well, probably thousands of hours now at this point. Um, so as much as I'd like to try and explain it all in super detail, I don't really have the time. So what I'll do is kind of I'll, I'll bring the camera along. We'll have a chat about what there is, uh, particularly in those bundles. So uh, let's do that now. Okay, so probably the most important bundle that you never really got to to see inside is this one. This is the uh, the flint that I was telling you about. So this is my uh, my knives. If I need to uh, process an animal or something, or if I need a blade for processing some sort of material, this is the uh, the place I come. So. Like I was saying earlier, the, uh, the serrated knife is really good for processing bone and antler and all that stuff. But something like this, I mean, you can see just how wicked sharp that is. Um, that is perfect for skinning, for uh, for dealing with flesh and meat and that kind of things. Um, so that's in a bundle all of itself. And then the other bundle next to it here, there was the flint napping kit. In that kit, I have a few different things. So there is the soft hammer. Soft hammer is just used to remove big bits of flint and then I have um, a couple of pressure flakers these are just deer antler tines and then I have a copper bopper here which I made yesterday actually and uh, again just for working flint and removing material um, fundamental part of the of the kit obviously um, if I don't have cutting implements then life becomes much much harder so being able to make them as well as carry them is very important um, Coming over this side, we have the uh, the kit with all the craft materials in it. So, as much as I uh, enjoy making functional things, it's also nice to be able to make things that actually look really nice. In my, or at least I try and get them to look nice. <laughs> it doesn't always work out that way. Um, but in a bundle, I usually carry a few materials that kind of help me achieve that. So in this one, I have like beads for decoration. Uh, I've got some more pine resin there in case I run out. Uh, some bone sort of decoration beads. I've got this red squirrel tail that I found in the woods one day and I figured I would keep that because I figured I will use it at some point to do something. And then here I have some deer sinew, the best or one of the best natural cordages I can get my hands on. I have just a bone, that will probably become fish hooks later on. And then bit of cordage there for uh, for bow drill should I ever need to do it and uh, I think that's it for the bundles um, the fire kits here I did bring them out just to kind of give you a look at those too so you've got iron pyrite flint scraper here for uh, for making the, the fine shavings you'll have seen me use that before if you've seen any of the videos and then this rock here is just for striking the pyrite to produce sparks. Those sparks catch on the, uh, the amadou and hey presto you've got fire. So again I carry two um, two of those kits just because one is uh, liable to get lost so it's good to have a backup. The, the bag here actually is a good friend of mine Phil does lots of amazing leather work Phil Kenyon and he gave me a few 
leather bags and they are like I mean this is just perfect the ideal size is really really strong really well sewn together um, so I keep that in there that's just as my, my spare kit nice to have it safe properly contained and uh, I think that's it obviously you've got the uh, Daldinia concentrica here the uh, the mushrooms I use for transporting fire or even making fire that were in that pouch there and um, yeah I think that's that's near enough fit now again it's a very easy thing to brush over um, but like, like this like I say is hours 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 of work years and years of learning and making and trying and failing and well you guys know the story so I won't bore you with it but um, yeah there's a lot of stuff there one thing I didn't show you actually was uh, the bow down there but the um, walking stick I use uh, I made this recently it's uh, it actually came from over there like pretty much right there me and Ed found it when we were out last weekend or not last weekend a couple of weekends ago and uh, it's just it's such a cool shape and uh, I thought it would make a really nice uh, walking stick to decorate it obviously I've got some feathers on there but for some reason I decided to torture myself and put some bow drill like divots in it just to like give it some sort of decoration um, but I say it's a walking stick actually what it is really is just a means for me to uh, to be able to reach things so like that out of there that up there for instance is out of reach because this has a a crook on it I can just grab it and pull it down to me so if that had berries on it or something you know I now have have access to it so that's the main reason behind the stick it's not actually because I'm just getting old so there we have it folks it's been an absolute joy sharing this with you um, because this is my passion this is my life's work basically up to this point and so I hope you've enjoyed it I'll set you guys up in the tripod we'll share some uh, some final words I'll uh, I'll pack and then uh, head off for my next adventure I think so um, yeah Okay folks, so there we have it. It's been an absolute joy being able to share all this stuff with you. Like I say, it's uh, literally just like the culminating piece of everything I've been learning over these past seven or eight years. Um, every video I've shared, you know, every post, every fire I've tried to make and failed, every thing I've broken, everything I've not managed to achieve and then practiced enough to actually like come full circle and learn it and be able to use it and now finally get to the point where I feel comfortable enough to like put all this stuff in a bag and then just disappear like into the woods uh, never to be seen again maybe <laughs> um, that being said that that being said that's basically the plan now um, and that's kind of the reason I made this video because what I want to do next is actually take this kit on a few different journeys we'll do um, we'll do a really nice long hike maybe 15 20 miles somewhere We'll do maybe an overnighter, maybe a couple of nights, just to kind of like show you guys how all well this stuff works. Uh, because I think it's it's not very often you actually see like the primitive skills being used as they're meant to be used, if that, like, if that makes sense. And that's not a knock to anyone in the, in the primitive field. Um, a lot of people just don't have the time or maybe just don't feel quite comfortable. Whereas uh, I feel like I'm in a position now where I can take that risk. Um, and it is a risk, don't get me wrong, you know, because you're, you're literally sleeping out in the open. You're, uh, you're using primitive methods to make fire, so if you were to get in a tricky situation, you're going to be sat there hammering rocks together rather than the lighter. You know, it's just a big deal. Um, but it's exciting. I find it really exciting anyway. I hope you guys have. It's been a real pleasure to, uh, to share this journey with you guys. Um, but what I'm going to do now is pack up and uh, head off. So... Hopefully, at some point in the not too distant future, we'll make one of those videos I was just talking about. Um, I know I say I'll make a video soon, and then four years pass and I pop up again. <laughs> but we're going to try and, because I, I'm excited about this, I'm going to you know, try and kind of strike while the iron's hot. Um, I used to have the shelter that I could go to and film and stay at and have kind of this like solid place. 
uh, where I could film. I don't have that at the moment now because I had to take it down. Uh, whole like backstory there. We'll cover that another day. Um, so I've gone from being like this. Um, I've been like almost uh, stagnant, uh, being stuck in this one place, just kind of doing the same stuff over and over again. And now I have everything I need to be mobile to to kind of move around. And uh, It'll be interesting to see how those two worlds collide because, as you guys know, I mean, you've seen, hopefully seen the video, you know, I've made shelters and I've stayed in them and I've had them for a long, long time. So to finally be nomadic and get up and move around and kind of explore what's out there is it's an exciting prospect. Um, but it's an important one too, I think, you know. Uh, so all that being said, I'm going to pack this away now. It's been an, a pleasure having you here and uh, I look forward to showing the next video with you guys. Until then, take care and uh, much love. So some of you may have noticed I had this sort of sitting in the uh, in the background. Now of course, when everything's stored away and packed, I have sort of free hands. Normally I'd be carrying the bow or the walking stick, but when those things are stored away, then I'll be carrying my uh, my foraging pouch. And the um, reason for that is sometimes you happen across um, some nice edibles, and it's good to have something on hand to uh, collect them with. Uh, as much as we all enjoy the um, the flashy stuff like hunting and everything else, uh, when it comes to eating in the woods, realistically foraging is going to be your uh, your uh, mainstay, as it were. So, uh, nice patch of chanterelles here. So I'm going to collect some of those and uh, carry on my way. So, uh, if you made it this far. Then uh, well done, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>